Dave here. How are you? Today is the 15th of August 2021. I trust everyone's had a good week, even though we are in lockdown. Give me a second. I also need to just quickly post this, which I have been lacking and uh, slacking, I should say. Uh, stuff that up totally. And again, of course, the pressure is on. And back a little bit of that out. Give me a second, we're nearly there. This is embarrassing. Done. <laughs> All right, today on the show, today on the show. Uh, we got any uh, chats? Good morning, everyone's saying hello there, which is great. Yes, the stream is running well. Uh, it's just me that wasn't running well. This week on the show, we're going to create a door jam access hatch for the clothes dryer unit that we've been building. And it's basically going to look like that. Now, there's a couple of little things that I'm going to do with it. It needs, it's an access panel as well above this unit, um, the unit that we've built. Above there, I used to have a telephone commander system, or the, one of the brands that made that kind of thing. And it was an intercom and everything between the different buildings on the property. Times have changed. I don't have the business anymore. So all of that stuff was pulled out. Got hit by lightning a few times. And I'll show you inside the cabinet, there's a couple of things that I can disconnect inside, in, inside that area there where this cabinet has just gone. I can disconnect the, uh, the house from the phone cables out on the street. Let me see if I've got anything here that I can show you. Um, it will be up the top. This was basically the kind of trailer for the show as well. I'll talk through it when we get up the top. But you see there how the basket fits underneath the, uh, the door. Now here we go, and this is where we're going to make this unit. See bottom left there, that's where I can disconnect the phone from the street. And I've trimmed up all of this ready to make the door jack and drop it in. Now it's going to have, let me get back to this part. which is here. I'm not doing too good, am I? Um, it's going to have... A, I was going to put a little curtain across there. I was thinking that would work well. But rather than have a curtain, you know, I, I think I'm going to do a piece of melamine and a couple of small holes for finger, uh, so I can put my finger in to lift this panel out. Now, I need to be able to make this jam. It's just going to be a basic butt joints. And then I'm going to put two beads, one either side of the jam, so that when I put the panel in, it's not just going to fall over onto the back, and it'll be guided into a dado at the top and a dado at the bottom. Now, the dado at the top is going to be 10 millimeters thick. The, stuff, the material I'm using is 18 millimeters thick. The dado at the top will be 10 deep. The dado at the bottom will be 5 millimeters deep. And we're going to do all of that on the show today. Now, also, we have a young gentleman who is a viewer and his dad has sent in a project that he's been working on. Now hang around for that. If I don't get to it, please say, <laughs> Dave, what about the viewers project? Um, okay, only 30 years old, Steve. Yes, uh, we, do. we use the mobile phone now as well. Good morning, John, and afternoon, I should say. Good evening, and everyone else, Mark Eckert. Uh, Another 415 coronas. Well, there you go. First thing we're going to do is we're going to rip the bead off the edge. Now, this is 18 millimeters thick. It's finger jointed pine and it's going to be good for paint. Did you know that maple, which is basically Pacific maple that we talk about in Australia, uh, is good for stain, but it is too porous in the grain for paint. You have to kind of seal it first. Pine is much better for paint work. That's just a, a by the by. So I'm going to rip around six millimeters off the side of this. It's already got a nice little profile from where I bought it from. And that will be our beads for both sides. And then we're going to rip both of these, this one and the bigger one under it, down to 95 millimeters wide. And then we'll dock them on the capex and then we'll 
have a look at everything and then go over to the router table. So we'll go over to the table saw first and I'll switch cameras. That didn't happen too badly. And I'll grab my eye muffs as well. All right. I'll tip this up just a little bit. Let me have a quick look, see what that's like. That's a bit better. All right, my first rip is going to be six millimeters. Oh, look, I've got it set at eight because I was working on some stuff yesterday. I might just leave it there at eight. I've got the rip blade up pretty high at the moment. The reason being, I've got the guard that's going to go over it. The higher the blade when I'm doing a rip like this, the blade is going to be pushing down as it's doing the cut rather than, I'll show you, if I, if I had it all the way down low, I can't get it down past. But if I got it down low, you can see what I'm saying. It's going to want to push the timber towards me. So at the moment, in this situation, I'm going to go up as high as it'll go for ripping. If I'm doing melamine work, I'll lower it down a lot. Anyway, so let's drop that onto there, make sure that everything's going to be good. And we have the blast gates are all working there. That's fine. So we'll do a rip off this first. The reason I'm doing this now is because I've got a lot of meat to hold on to. Actually, you know what? Something that would be smarter, rather than having it out that far, because it's parallel, I'm going to take it out to there. I change my mind all the time, don't I? So I'll bring this back. There we go. Now, I can use these to help out as well. Why not? Lock that down. And that one, these are going to keep me extra safe. Move that one out of the way. I'll get these set to the right height before we do anything. And I might have said that before, is how you do that is you just set it to the mount, not to the actual wheel. These are non, uh, they, they won't rotate backwards, so they can't let, nothing can fly back at me. It's just going to be so, so safe. Slide that under there, push it back. That's good. And lock. They do have a slight lift capacity on the front, so I can slide that up, drop it down. Now I'm going to be a whole lot safer. All right, that allows me to use my push stick and go all the way through. Little things like that, just keep your wits about you when you're using a table saw. All right, a little bit of noise. Make sure I've got the height locked. Yep. That's my B. So quick and easy. Set it to 95 millimeters. Done. And we'll rip this one and that one. Notice I've still got my nice pretty edge there. This one is going to go to the back, but we're actually going to rip that off. All right. Now you see what happened just then? When I moved that timber back, it hit the blade guard. If the guard wasn't on there, that piece of wood would have been grabbed by the blade and hoiked at me like a javelin. Use the guards. I can't stress it enough.
spin this around this way. Get the plan. Just had a quick look at what was happening there on the on the stream. That's all good. Okay, so I need to get two pieces at 650 and two pieces at 291 because 325 is the overall. My uh, uprights are going to be less the thickness doubled of the top, the head and the sill. So we're looking at uh, taking 32 off, I think. I think this is 18 millimeters. So 291 is what we've got to set at. Two ninety one is there. I'm going to dock them to start. Now you may notice that I do a cut across the top to start, then I bring the saw back and do the cut right the way through. That gives me a clean finish on the top, like you just see there. And this is the bottom. There. So what's happening there is the blade is, as the blade is coming down onto the wood, it's, it's doing this. And then when I'm coming from out here, and it's coming up under the wood. So basically it's a scribe cut on the top and a scribe cut on the bottom. Okay, 291. Checking. Remember, we check twice because I haven't been doing too good with the measurements lately. 291. Okay, sorted. Look, why not use this as well while we're there? Keeps me safe. Wait for it to stop. Okay, they're my uprights. And I need two at 650. Oh, hold on. While I've got it there, I'll cut the beads. Because I've already got it at 291. Alrighty, six, six, five, zero. cut. Switch cameras again. All right, so we're powering along well. Let me have a quick look down the... Morning, John. Hope you're traveling okay. John, how are you? Tired? Um... Tools, trucks, tractors, and tech with Mike. Glad to catch the stream. Thanks. Um, I swear a lot cut again. Uh, dear. So all you guys have been coming in, having a chat while I've been doing other things. That's good. Um, hi, Paul. How are you? All right. Let's have a look at young William Thompson's project. I told you that we'd have a viewer viewers project and Ben put his son in and said uh, Dave can you 
throw these up. So let's have a look at this. Here he is. This is, uh, I'll have a quick read of the sheet as well. Uh, William Thompson, eight years old, is making a tool tote. And let's just hook in for use on Poppy's Farm. All hand tools made in the local woodwork club workshop. Some pyrography yet to be done. Let's have a look at the next, next picture. Being given some advice. Look at the smile on Will's face. That's just heartwarming. So what he's doing here is drilling some pilot holes so he does pilot holes so he doesn't split the, the timber as he puts the nails in. There he is. Focusing, focusing. Let's get those nails put in without bending them. And uh, it continues on, again, being uh, advised by one of the mentors, I guess, at the Woodwork Club. And there he is, all finished outside the Gippsland, Gippsland Woodcraft Group. And they meet every second Saturday. How cool is that? They don't have 843 members. I think that's the address. <laughs> so good on you, William. That's fantastic. And, uh, and thanks to Dad for sending those in. If you've got a viewer's project, please send them in for me and I'll share them on the show. If they're up to the quality of William's, of course. The cordless drill. Yep. Having a quick read. G'day, Matthew. How are you? All right, all right. The next thing to do on this project, now I've lost all the wood, I'll be here somewhere, is I'm going to go over to the router table and we're going to create these dados. Now, I want the dados, I want this panel, and I'm going to make the panel out of this. This is part of the mold. I've kept on using that mold that we did for the resin table. I've been using it and using it and using it, and this is going to be the lift up panel. Uh, so I need to create these datas. I think I'm going to go back 18 millimeters from the front and then we'll create the datas there. So I'll switch over to the other camera in a second. I'll just set it up because that's the one that I was just using. And rather than move the camera around while... I think, I think that'll do there come around the back of this. I've got the drill press out ready because we're going to be doing some stuff with that as well. Let me have a look. Yeah, that's okay. All right, down there. I'll tip it up just a little bit and back a touch. That's better. All right. Need to change the cutter. Move that out of the way over there. You know, this might seem a little bit kind of basic, but it's part of the project. And you know, I like to be able to follow a project all the way through, if possible. We'll bring this guy up. This is the nosing piece that we had in there. That's locked. box of odds and sods. Remember this yellow thing here? That's the fellow that keeps me safe. Now with a router, I don't know if you're aware, if you're only new to watching the show, the first time you unlock, like you give it that first bit, it's, there's going to be a second grab just here. Got to crack that again. And then out that comes. And a lot of people as well, let's do this, why not? Only takes a second. When you take the collet out, or change a cutter. Sometimes I do that as well because it shakes all the dust out that gets caught in those cuts that let the collet um, expand and contract. And also give it a blow down there. And while we're on the subjects, routers have a K line on them. That router cutters, this that one doesn't, but this one will. See just here, that's the K line, and it looks like a K. So what you do is you put the router bit into the chuck up to there. This one doesn't have one. Oh, yes, it does. Tell a lie. Look, it's right above the C. I never realized that. So just 
There, there's the K line on this, on this one. Pop him in. Well, my collet's not deep enough for that, but if it was going into the spindle on, the, um, on my CNC machine, well then it would be able to go that deep. Lock in, and we'll lower it down. And because I'm going to be coming close to the edge, I'm going to put an insert in there. I don't want it to be too close. That one will do nicely. That just avoids anything sliding down the side and getting, creating myself a bit of mischief. Keep it safe. I'll pop this one down here as well at the same time. Then it's not going to roll around and go down the hole. Now the first one, we're not doing anything with these. We'll put those to the side. It's these two, top and the bottom. So the head and the sill. And we're going to come in 18. We'll use that as my router table fence because it's just so easy. And we'll, we're going to go 10 millimeters, won't we? So I'll lower it down. Might even get a pencil and put a mark on it at 10 millimeters. And we'll do the same for five millimeters on the other one. All right. That's good. And five on this one. Now I've got to make sure that I'm not going to get myself caught out here. That'll be okay. That's fine. All right, 10 millimeters on the first one. Well, I'll tell you what, that wasn't too bad, was it? Right on it. <laughs> you can be tinny. Um, and so I shall lock the router in height. <clears throat> the reason I lock it is because when you turn a router on, there is a tiny little bit of vibration there and it will slowly, slowly settle down. So you have to lock it. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a tapered slot. And we'll bring this across. What did I say? I wanted about 18. I'll do that by referencing this width. I'm going to turn the cutter around just a little bit more. That'll do me. About there is good. Lock it. All right, so that'll be happening like that. I could spin these around to act as table saw guides to hold it down. And you know what? I think I will. That's pretty clever, isn't it? Relax this. Let it drop. Lock that. Lock that. Let's pull that out to the side. Lock that. And that one's at this right height. Yes. Now what I can also do with this is years ago when I first started doing all this stuff, I became very uh, fixated on it actually having to be the exact perfect way to do something. Now that I've said all of this, I can't find the stupid thing that I was going to talk about. Um, what I was going to do, and I still can, I still can. I thought I had it here, but I don't. I'm looking for a hold down clamp that I've got, and I think it's on the drill press. Give me a sec. What this does, it holds the back of the table saw down. 
the, the table saw's rip fence, I should say. Now this, this might work. It's one of these guys. This might fit in there. If it doesn't, well then, bad luck. I'll go without it. And it's not going to the rotten thing. This one's designed for the slot, T-slot, or the, the uh, T-track on the drill press. It's just slightly too big. What it does, it stops, stops the end lift, but there's a fair bit of weight there. It would have been nice just to show you. Anyway, we'll go with it like this. So they're going to hold everything for me. It's going to hold down and towards the fence as I push the timber through. See that? That's a fair pass, but I think 10 millimeters will be all right. Ha! I'm going to, I'm going to change it even again. Just thinking about it, what I might do is I might send the first one through at five millimeters and the second one at five, then raise the cutter up to 10. What do you think? Best not to rush these things. Let's bring that along. Undo the lock, lower it down. And I think We've got to come up just a little. That's it there. And lock it. Now, I think that's going to work better. I love, I love just slowing down and thinking and go, right, this is going to keep me safe. It's going to give me a better job. Why not? All right, so we have the automatic blast gate up above and below. Open that one. I'm still yet to automate that last part. And let's use one of these as well. Oh, good, here we go. That's our first one. Yep. And this one. can take it up to 10. You might be wondering why all of that dust was going there and not down through the bottom. It was going through the bottom a bit, but when you cover this, it wasn't pulling it here, so it was shooting out the end of this slot. And then when it got to a point where this was covered, then it started going down inside there. There was a little bit, we'll do that. No one knows the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Raise that up to 10 millimeters. I'm glad I went at five first. 10. Let's do this one.
Lovely. Take that out. All right. Greg, you still got the Sunday thing happening. God idea. <laughs> Maybe it was an act of God. I don't know. Um, ah, the kite flying story, baby. Well, when Vicky was pregnant with our second child, second or third, I can't remember, um, she went overdue a couple of weeks and you'd hear all these stories about how to induce the birth and uh, <laughs> scrubbing floors, all that kind of stuff. Well, we decided to go kite flying. Now, I don't just fly a kite. I created this reel. There was a massive reel with string and the kite went up and uh, I made Vicky run around, <laughs> nearly 10 months pregnant, running around this oval, holding the kite, bouncing around. <laughs> Anyway, finally, we got it up in the air and I must have had around about a kilometre of strength and the thing went up and up and up and then it started coming down. I think it landed in the next suburb. Anyway, it's all good fun. I love doing that kind of stuff. Um, next thing to do is to nail this together and a bit of glue. Uh, glue is there and a brush. I'll grab. We're going great for time. It's not, we're not going to be running out of time. It's not pushing it. It's just going to be a comfortable show. All right. Now, this is simple butt joints. I'm not going to do any housing out, uh, doing a, a rebate either end of these jams. It doesn't need it. Um, Third, okay, air traffic control for too, too high on the kite. So here we go. See that I've got a 10 millimeter deep dado there and a five millimeter deep dado there. So it's actually going to be this way up. This is the top, this is the head, and this one here is the sill. Uh, I did it at five millimeters, not 10. I was going to, I was going to do it at 10, but I decided not. Um, four, four kids, four kids. Um, and they all survived and turned out okay. Yeah, surprise, surprise. Uh, Ebony, who's the one doing the trip around Australia at the moment is the baby. Let me see where I was up to. All right, now I'm going to use the 16 gauge gun with two inch nails. Remember the other week, last week I said, when you're nailing into, if I was nailing 16 to 16, I would use a 32 millimeter nail in, in edge grain. But if I'm going into long grain, so I'm gonna be nailing into this, well then I need to have it three, the nail's gotta be three times the thickness of the top piece, which is three times 16. I'll let you work that out. But I'm gonna use a 50 millimeter uh, nail. All right. I don't think there's anything else I need to do at this stage. I'm only gonna put glue on these and I want them all to be facing out to the front. That's all good. Let's go to Carl Camp for this. There we go. That makes it a bit easier. Spread it out a little. And grain tends to absorb the glue pretty quickly as well. Soaks in quick. Now I'm only putting glue on that one to start. Now why am I doing that? Because I'm going to use the other one as a support out there. Like that. And so I've no glue on this yet. I'll put glue on there soon. So I can come back to there at any point. 
sit it down. And then because I'm using a nail gun, I'm going to throw the eye muffs on again. These are things I never used to worry about when I was younger. But, see, here they are. And without going down through the rebate, or the dado, I should say, I parked the gun on there. Got him. Done. Get a rag. With a bit of water. Just to tidy it up. All good. Now glue on the other end. We go to that one. Whoop, don't fall off. Just to prove I'm wearing the goggles. Beautiful. Flip him over. Now I can put the glue on both hands because it's, yeah, it's not going to go anywhere. As I said before, it's, it's basic, 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 but it might be one thing that someone's only just starting out and they'll think, oh, well, that's a good idea. Yep. We all, we, see, the thing is we presume that everyone else is at the same stage as we are, and we're not. We're, we're, we're all jumping on board woodwork and, and anything in life, really, at different times. And that's why there's people out there that teach for a living. Let's pop this on here slowly and slowly at that end. Look how good my CapEx is. That's just, that's so square. I love it. I'll tell you a story, an interesting story. A friend of mine rang me up the other day, actually messenger, and said, Dave, my CapEx isn't working. And so we went through all the problems, you know, he said, oh, I'll have to book it in and send it off to Festool. It's still under warranty, worked three years, you know, great. And then uh, I got a call the next day. <laughs> he said, guess what? I hadn't turned the automatic on the dust extractor to auto. And of course, the CapEx wouldn't work. But, but do you have any things like that? I won't mention his name. Do you, have you ever had something like that happen to you? And you think, you idiot. <laughs> Anyway, lasers won't come on, this won't start. Oh, you know, it cost me a lot of money. Oh, <laughs> they better fix it. <laughs> it even plugged the dust extractor into another power point to see if there was a fault with the power point. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you his name. I went to. He'll be having a little giggle. He'll be thinking, shut up, Dave. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> what do you think about that, Derek? Oh. Who'd do something like that? There we go. That's all done. Now, the next thing we're going to do, straight away, we've got a beautiful little reveal there. How good is that? So this is the top. Remember, it's got a 10 millimeter dado at the top and a five millimeter dado at the bottom. Now, I'm going to put these little guys in here. Now, these ones are designed to stop the panel pushing through. So when it's like this, that way up, 
if I'm putting the panel in from you know, down here, because remember the dryer is going to finish up around about this high, this panel is up above it, near the top of a door. So as I push the stuff in, I want these little pieces of wood to guide it into the top dado. There's reason why I do these things. Bit of glue on it as well. And these ones are going to be put in with tiny, tiny brads in a different gun. They're going to be an 18 gauge nail. You, know, you could just use panel pins, it'll do the same thing. It's what I used to use all the time before I had these nice tools. But if you've got them, why not use them? Just sliding that into position. And that was the advantage of cutting it at the same time on the capex when we cut the sides using the same stop. That's all perfect. And as I said, the smaller, smaller gun, I'm going to take these nails out. These are an 18 gauge nail. And I'll go with these little guys. Look how tiny they are. They are probably 16 millimeters around that. So in the gun, there's different spots in the carriage. I'll throw a few more in. Tiny, tiny. Done. Battery in. Oh, Derek, have you messed up? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've just been reading through the uh, comments there. Uh, everyone's going to tell all their stories. If you're watching the show in the recording, let the, uh, the chat come up as well. And it's a bit of a fun watch. If you're watching on a TV, you'll have to get a mobile phone or something like that so you can see the chat, because I don't think you'll be able to get the chat on the TV. All right, let's pop these in. I need to increase the power down to four. Beautiful. Good. Didn't come through the back. It's always good. And the other piece. So much fun. Sometimes the easy jobs are very rewarding because no one can stuff these up unless, of course, <laughs> you, you forget to turn your dust extractor onto auto. I'm being a bit mean now. <laughs> but it, Derek had me going. I was, I was wondering and wondering. I thought, that doesn't sound right. Doesn't sound right. I said, look, just take the back off, take the top off the machine and have a look yourself. He says, oh, it's under warranty. I don't want to do that. Oh, well, fair enough. Lucky you didn't, isn't it? You might have pulled, <laughs> pulled the thing to bits and it scattered all over the floor. Oh, I still can't find out what the problem is. <laughs> oh, dear. Now, it's important we don't go too far back because if we go too far back with a bead, it's going to hit a lip and you're going to have to kind of jiggle it a bit. And we don't want to do that. I want it to be right on. It's got to be perfect. <laughs> Done. How are we going for time? Quarter two. Okay, so that's our jam finished. Let's quickly do a diagonal measurement. See how we're going. Seven twenty-eight. It's Twenty-seven and a half, basically. Seven twenty-seven. It's good enough. That's going to do me half a millimetre out, which is a quarter of a millimetre overall if you, if you halve them. What do we got here? And neighbours who had a problem. Um, Stephen, you're talking about the um, tape in your hand. How many times have you picked up your phone and gone, where are my specs? And it on you. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, Man, it died, lost some beans. Key wasn't on, still requires the key to be on with. Ben, we're all going to have a story. We're all going to have a story. Okay, so that's lovely. I'll give this a quick wipe with the, with the rag. Get that little bit of glue out of there. A 
lovely. This is so nice. All right, next part is, you know, the right thing better fit. I'll be mighty upset if it doesn't. I'm going to just give this brush a quick wash in water. I know they're cheap, but why, why let the glue set on them when you, it only takes you two seconds to give it a rinse? Next thing. going to create this panel at the saw. We we'll might watch it from that side this time. Come back. Let's see what that looks like. Yep, not too bad. All right. Hi, Andy. How are you? All right. I need my dimensions. It's not a bad little trick with these. It's not what they're designed to do. They do make uh, guides for router tables. But I had those out and they did the job. I need, this is 16 millimeters, so it's a little bit lower. So I'm adjusting the rollers now. Down they go. All right, I think I'll take it off that side to start, get my plan. And the panel needs to be 300 by 612. You know what? I'm going to check it. I'm going to check it with a tape that we're not going to stuff it up. 612. Of course, that would be karma, wouldn't it? I've got 613 and a half there. So that should be fine that way. And then up all the way into the 10 millimeter section there, 300. Beautiful. Lovely. We want it 300 tall. Oh, I've got to change the blade. I've got a rip blade in there, haven't I? Very important. The arbor is locked, so it can't turn. Why is that? David. Hmm. There we go. Now, very important when you're taking the nut off, <laughs> changing your blade, keep your hand over the nut and the finger underneath as you're undoing it, so it stays in your hand. I recently had the very embarrassing thing. I had, I had a Derek moment. Is that going to be a saying? I had a Derek moment. And the nut came off and went straight down inside my dust collection port, down through, through the back of the cabinet and into the part under the floor here. I had to lift the floor to go find the, <laughs> the rotten thing. Very embarrassing. Ah. Uh, Dear me. All right, melamine blade. It's one of those things. It, use the blade that's designed to cut the material you're using. This is one of the best ones I've ever had. But the only thing is, it's slightly thicker than my other blades. So, and then putting the nut back on, just be careful. There we go. Um, so I have to allow, it's about one millimeter thicker, so I have to allow one more millimeter here on the guide. And don't reef on a table saw. As the blade turns, it tightens. So all you need to do is give it a little bit so that it will hold the blade and the blade, blade won't slip on the arbor. I'll put that to the side. And get the... 
I'm off. All right, this back in. This has got a quick release on it. And this time I'm gonna lower it. Remember how I had it up for ripping? I've shown people before how I do it. Set it beside it and lower it down until the gullet. Now the gullet is between the teeth. That's the bottom point between the teeth. Where are we? Until I'm at the bottom of the gullet. That's it. Lock it there. All right. 300. And one. Remember, I have to allow one more millimetre. We're doing well. Ten minutes to go in the show, and I think we're going to get everything done I want to. that cut. And the back. A little bit there, but the rest of it's just beautiful. All right. Um, how am I going to cut this? I think I'll do the rest on the capex. It's going to be easier. Uh, how long? 612. So I'll dock the end. Bring this over a little bit closer so you can see. If it was going to be any more than that, what I would have done, let's see if you can see all right there. Yep. Uh, 612. Move that out of the way. I want to dock the end off to start. And I'll show you, again, that method of cutting a scribing cut and then the full plunge and go. <clears throat> I'm just going to cut this off because I've got that rubbish there. Come over the top. Now that was a little bit of backwards and forwards, but I'll show you the result. That's the top. And the underside. Pretty good. 612. I'll do a proper scribing cut this time rather than mucking around. I should have Ideally, when I do it with the track saw, you know, I start at the back and come forward. Sometimes this you don't have as much control because it's not a set held height. So that's why I changed when I was doing it. I thought, no, I won't show it that way. I'm going to start at the front, go to the back, drop it down a little bit, then bring it all the way to the front and go all the way down. The lark switch. <laughs> Get a uh, something printed for it. Oh, now what this on this little door? We should check that it fits in there. We should. I'm going to get a label put on it. 
I was going to do something with the CNC, but I thought, you know, this is overkill. My daughter, Bianca, has one of these little um, printers that she prints on things that go in a fridge because she's an organization freak like me. And uh, I'll get her to make something for this. Change blades on the capex as you do on the table saw. Uh, Stevie's, I do change, but at the moment, that's an aluminium blade in there and that's perfect for, for this and it's okay for timber. So I'll switch between the timber, the, the fine cut on the capex and also the, um, the aluminium, but it's, it's pretty good. So let's see if it fits. So we, we drop it in up there, slide it up and then, you know what? I need to shave a little bit off the back. That's all right. I'll do that. I'll do that a little bit later. I should have really tested this in the data before I nailed it together. Not to worry. Now I need to put some um, holes in it and we'll, we'll mark where it's going to be. Get the pencil on the tape. See, even on the most simple things, even on the most simple things, you can stuff it up. Put it in the center, so half of 300 is 150. 150. And I think we'll come in possibly 100 millimeters from either side. Now what I'm going to do, I'll move this up out of the way a little bit. So I've got, I got my two points there. I could use a Forstner bit to drill through this, but it's not as neat. It will get a little bit kind of rough. It'll chip out a fair bit. So I'm going to use a carbide hole saw. Now this is very, very nice. The carbide, it's got three carbide cutters on it and it cuts through melamine really, really well. There's a couple of different mounts that you can use. This one here is a standard mount for hole saws. People in Australia will be very familiar with these. And the mount style that this has as standard is this little guy. Now this is a quick release mount that has a drill that goes straight in. And then you push that down and it locks in there. So that's it. And that would screw onto there and hold it. But I find I get better control with this one. So I'm going to pop that in. This is the style that's got two little pins that locate when it goes in there. So now I've got the drill, which is the pilot drill, that'll steer it and then it goes into the press here. <clears throat> Mike, how are you? Uh, 150.5, Dave, remember you added the one millimeter for the saw blade. Yes. Yeah, I think it'll be okay. I think a bit of mucking around, a bit of mucking around. Now, one of the interesting things with my drill press is I don't have a keyless chuck, but I have my chuck up here. So it's, I, what I've done is I've super glued a rare earth magnet to the top of the See that? It's not going anywhere. It's always there. So I'll undo the, the cutter that was it, the um, forcing a bit that was in there. And let's see how we go. Come on, stay in there. Gotcha. Uh, better plug it in. That would help. And don't forget, after the show, we've got the Patreon meeting. If you want to join in there, have a look in the, click the Show More button below the video. And just on the Show More, down there, there'll be a link to the Patreon page. You have to be a patron to be able to join in with that chat. It's one of the only things I charge for. Uh, so if you want to, go for it. On the back, there's a, uh, a little 
device that I can set it so it's not going to go any deeper. But I'm going to leave that alone for the moment. I don't want to be restricted. I'll know when I'm through. I'm going to start the hole. Now this is where I want that clamp that I mentioned earlier. Now that I've said that, I've probably put it somewhere where I'll never find it. There, found it. Stop panicking. I can't have the fence on because I won't be able to get the panel back far enough if the fence was on. So let's slide this in. Out there, and I'm going to put a clamp on the other side just to hold it so it doesn't spin. There's no real fear of it spinning because it's such a large piece, but never say never. There's always that chance it'll grab it. Cool, that's got it. All right, here we go. Well, that's embarrassing. Now that I've said it does a really nice clean entry, it just butchered it. And maybe it had a little wobble on it. The hole has come through. I made sure that the hole came through. I'm going to line that up again with the drill, like so. Hold it in position. So now this part is going to be the front because I just took my time a little bit more with that. I'll show you what I mean. That's a pretty clean hole. The other side, too fast. Ripped it up a bit. But that's going to be the hole. There'll be another one on the other side and I'll hit it with a small round over cutter in the trimmer and that'll be, when I put my finger in there to lift the panel out, it'll be nice and easy. All right, that's it. Now what I'm going to show you also is some people may have been curious about uh, how the resin pour project ended up looking when it's all finished and in my office. So I shall show you a picture. That's the completed project. Oh man, oh man, that is such a pleasure. Okay, and back to Patreon Cam. What do you think of that? Now, during that project, I'm sure a lot of people would have become bored with what was happening, but that's just part of doing it. It's, you know, it takes time. And uh, this whole project will look fine when it's all finished. I have to do a little bit of mucking around with that panel just to make sure that it goes in nicely now, but I'll get there. Um, and... As I say, the Patreon meeting in a couple of minutes. Come back to here. And thank you to my patrons, especially during these times. And back here again. Look after yourselves. Be nice to each other. And I'll see you next week. Bye.